I've got something to tell you that I, I don't want other people to hear. I, I can tell you, you'll give me a fair hearing, but if I say this in public, I think I might get sectioned. People will think I'm mad. So we, we've got to go somewhere remote where other people can't, can't hear us talking. Tiffany would say. I think we're alone now, apart from some sheep over there. This car costs £140,000. £40,000 more than an M5 competition, more than a 911 Turbo, more than an Audi R8 or an Aston Martin Vantage. But that's, that's not the crazy bit. I think it might be worth it. It's alright, I don't think anyone heard. That's just between us. You understand now why some people might think I was crazy? It is though. So what makes this car special? Well, you might have seen the headline figure of this being the most powerful BMW road car ever produced with 626 brake horsepower. But that's only 10 brake horsepower more than an M5 competition. And it's got the same amount of torque, 553 pounds foot of torque, which is obviously not to be sniffed at, but the extra power is not the reason that this car is so special more pertinent is the weight reduction. So it weighs 70 kilos less, which is not to be sniffed at actually, particularly when 23 kilos of that is from the carbon ceramic brakes, which come as standard, and that's obviously unsprung mass. We've also got the big carbon bonnet, so that removes quite a lot of mass from over the nose as well. We've also got a bit of carbon splitter, that carbon sort of lip on the boot lid, carbon rear diffuser, in addition to the carbon roof, which is see, already part of the M5 package. Then there are the dampers, which have come from the M8 Grand Coupe and then been tuned specifically for this M5 CS. And when you put all of that together, it's just magic. It is absolutely fabulous, this car. And it's not something that is just brilliant on a track, where you can decouple the front drive shafts and go sideways to your heart's content. I haven't driven this on track, I'd love to, but it feels really special on the road. And then it goes one stage further, and I think this is the mark of a truly great car. It feels special on the road at any speed. You do not have to be going quickly to feel that this is shot through with M Division magic. You get into this first thing in the morning, pottering through town, and the steering, there's a, a lucidity to it. It's something that the best BMWs have always done. And this is one of the best BMWs. It just has a lovely clarity to it, but also a sort of lightness that makes the whole car feel precise, but, but agile, really agile. And having fantastic steering, you can tell that it's really good steering because this is a big car and these are really quite narrow roads, but it doesn't feel big. You can thread it down a road like this between the stone walls and the rock faces and it feels accurate. It doesn't feel intimidatingly massive. The suspension just seems to breathe with the road. 
you can turn it up. Sport's pretty good actually, it just then gives you a bit more control. If you leave it in normal, then yeah, through the compressions, it just sort of on the rebound doesn't settle necessarily on the first stroke back through the damper, but put it up to sport, much more controlled. And the whole car, it's got such a good balance to it. You think big turbocharged V8 up the front is going to start pushing as those big saloon sort of character trait, I suppose. This just turns in, and the harder you push it, the more it seems to happily rotate into a corner. I've left it mostly in four-wheel drive sports, so it's sort of definitely rear biased. It's just fantastic. As I say, this is not really sort of, <laughs> this is not driving in a Larry way, it just feels so much all of a piece, and there's something cool about a car that you know is this big, but that can be driven with such delicacy, such accuracy. Seriously, some of those other supercars I mentioned, they don't feel as special as this, I don't think. The clever thing about this car as well is that it still does the big super salute trick. It's comfortable. It's definitely everyday usable. The dampers work with the road, they work around town. In comfort, it's a lovely place to be. These seats, perfectly good on long journey. Now, there is something else about the CS that I haven't mentioned yet, and to be honest, it's something so fabulous that this alone might make it worth £140,000. What is it? A gear knob fashioned from diamonds, a lifetime subscription to the Nürburgring, a free M2 with every purchase. Nope. It's got yellow lights. Now that's just cool, isn't it? It makes you think of the GT cars at Le Mans. It also makes me think of old French cars, because from about the mid-1930s, all French cars had yellow lights. As far as I can tell, nobody is exactly sure why, but one theory is that it was a request from the French military who wanted to be able to tell French cars from foreign vehicles, if the country was invaded, which it was. Other people say that they're just easier to see by, because they're called selective yellow, because they cut out the sort of the blue and the violet end of the spectrum, which can provide dazzle, particularly in sort of adverse weather conditions, so heavy rain or snow, which is why on Rally Sweden, you'll see rally drivers wearing yellow glasses. We haven't seen them on French cars though since 1993, because at that point they decided to fall into line with the rest of the EU, which mandated white lights. How can this get away with it? Well, these only come on when you unlock the car or when you've got the headlights on full or dipped beam. So there we go. Whilst we're out here, we should probably have a quick sort of mention of the other sort of M5 CS specific bits, namely these gold bronze sections. I'm not quite sure about the grill being that. It sort of reminds me a bit of it. It's been sort of drinking a cappuccino or something. I've forgotten to wipe its face. But I do like these wheels and these accents down here. There's also some very gold exhaust tips. They're so gold, I don't think you can call them gold bronze. They're just gold. There are also some very CS bits inside. The most noticeable things when you get into this are obviously these bucket seats and the fact that we've got them not only in the front, but also in the back. There is a downside to the ones in the back, I have to say, and that's that, well, they don't fold forwards. So if, like me, you like carrying a bicycle around, it's a bit tricky. I and mean, the boot is cavernous, but it's definitely a downside to the M5 CS, I think, on the, the practicality level. And this has to be, you want it to be practical, given that it's, well, it's big. Other bits in here, well, obviously, we've got this lovely Alcantara wheel. I like the way they do these sort of perforations here, so you see the red poking through. And then we've got the carbon paddles here, which you might recognise as well as the seats from the new M3. In fact, there is quite a lot shared with the new M3 when you look around. And that's not a small saloon car these days, is it? Which rather begs the question, shouldn't you just buy an M3 for about half the money? Well, no, there are certainly still some things about this that I think set it apart for a start. The power to weight ratio is definitely better in this. It's nearly 345 brake horsepower per tonne as opposed to 295 
for the M3. Thank the fact that this only weighs 95 kilos more, about 45 kilos more if you're comparing the all-wheel drive version of the M3 to this, which is obviously more apples with apples, isn't it? And then there's the fact that this does look cooler, I think. You know, it hasn't got the, the big grille, it's not the prettiest grille, but it's not the big grille of the M3. And I do have a soft spot for the M5. This car makes me think of well, one of my favourite pieces of car cinematography of all time, that little short film directed by Guy Ritchie starring Clive Owen and Madonna it's called The Star and it has an E39 M5 in it and it's just so cool. This car reminds me of that. Things I don't like about this, the sound of the engine. It's not great. It's gruff, rumbly, but there's not a great deal of character to it. The gearbox, arguably yes, a dual clutch gearbox would give it a bit more snap and precision, but perhaps, particularly in this big super saloon, I think it doesn't worry me that much. It arguably worried me a little bit more with the M3 and M4, but in this, I think it's fine. Yes, it, it, it would give you a bit more control at times. I think they've dialed it back even more than in the M3, but I think it fits with the character of the car overall. Steering, you've got two options. I like comfort, actually, as I said before, for that sort of, just sort of lightness, almost a little bit of slackness in it. But then when you're going quicker, I think sport does work just to give you a bit more weighting and confidence, perhaps. The way this changes direction is extraordinary. We're on a P0 Corsa tyre. My word, we got some grip. And the thing is, the more you push it, the more you, you expect to start to feel the weight. And yes, I suppose you can feel it, but only in that sort of nice way of just being able to use it. It changes direction in a way that just, it shouldn't. Not for an M5, not for a car this big, not for a big super saloon. Points like this, you think you're gonna to have to wait for it and you just don't, it's just there and it's, it's precise in the corner. Little changes of direction as well. And although it might not sound great, there's no doubting the effectiveness of this engine. <laughs> it's so responsive. 0-62 in three seconds. Three seconds. This is such a special thing. It's so good. It shouldn't work on a road like this, but it does. I think the fact that this car is a CS really does mean something now. Obviously we had the E46 M3 CS, but it's, it's really since the F80 CS that M3 and M4 CS, that the badge has taken on this real kudos. At the time, I don't think it did. I think we thought, wow, that's, that's expensive for an M3 or M4, and they don't appear to have done very much. But looking back on it, the decision to go with the smaller front wheels, to have that stagger, the way it drove, it was the one to have. Then we had the M2 CS, and again, oh, it's too expensive, but the more we drove it, we realised just how good it was. Yes, it makes an M2 competition look really good value for money, but if money's no object, then that M2 CS, it's the one to have. It's, it's just awesome. And it's the same with this. The CS badge is seriously desirable. As you can tell, I'm more than a little in love with this car. And I think I know how to justify it. You just have to think of it as a supercar with all the attendant performance and feedback, but without the looks. The M5 CS is a supercar for people that don't like the image of supercars.
just love that last tracking drone shot. Uh, I realised there was quite a lot of drone footage in that film actually, but we, we really just felt that the car and the scenery and everything, it sort of it rather lent itself to it. And Glenn did an absolutely ace job as always on it, um, I thought anyway. This is the bit where, well, you know what's coming next. I ask you to subscribe to the Carfection YouTube channel if you haven't already, because it, it just really helps us. And um, if you don't wanna miss out on more spectacular drone footage, then um, yeah, go on, subscribe. Make sure all the notifications are turned on as well, the bell icon and everything else and settings, um, just to make sure you're maximizing your subscription. Uh, if you don't do that, maybe just give the film a thumbs up, give it a like. Uh, or share it around, perhaps on social media. We are at Carfection Films on Instagram. I'm at Henry Catchpole, and we're at Carfection on Twitter, and I'm still at Henry Catchpole. So there we go. Um, or Facebook as well. We're on there as well. So yes, comments, comments, comments down below. Maybe about what do you think BMW should put the CS badge on next? Surely the M8 has got to be in line for it. Anyway. Thank you very much again for watching and yeah, we'll see you next time. Go on, subscribe. <laughs> you know you want to. <laughs>